Antelope Valley Unit 2 was 30 years in June. And in that time, there's 54 employees that were here during startup are still employed at this facility. And 28 of our current employees weren't even born yet. Antelope Valley uh, started the year very well. In April 2nd, we had an outage and we had a 10 week outage. During that outage, we installed new secondary overfire air, uh, new low NOx burners, and we switched our startup fuel from fuel oil to natural gas. Uh, the reason we had to do this was due to the what we call the MATS rule, it's the mercury and air toxins standard. So the SOFA project helped us comply with the federal implementation plan for regional haze. Basically it required us to install the Lonox burners and the SOFA along with a limit of 0.17 pound per million BTU on a, based on a 30 day rolling average or NOx. Right now we're in compliance with the limit that was established for the plan. We've installed six new monitoring wells out at the landfill. This is in response to the coal combustion residuals rule, and we're also starting to sample those wells. With the gas project, one of the, some of the biggest challenges was just getting it physically routed into the building. The green line back here is our, is our natural gas line. Where it comes through the floor, that's our supply and then it goes through pressure reducing valves, uh, flow measuring devices, and control valves, and then it gets routed around all the individual burners and igniters. We had to replace the seal trough at the bottom of the boiler. It was wearing out, it was 30 years old, and it was just rough shape, so we actually had to completely tear the old one out, ship out refractory, cut it off, and build a new one. We are installing a mercury liquid absorbent injection system. So basically this system will give us the ability to have multiple options for mercury control. We can inject amended silicates, powdered activated carbon, or this liquid absorbent. And with the multiple options for mercury control, it allows us to keep our costs down. The, the key with all these major projects, with the outages and everything, is just the communication. We had upwards of three, four hundred people working in, in the boiler here and a lot of them were from this level up between six and eight floors. We came in after the outage and then we set a generation record in the unit two so you can tell that all their hard work and dedication is paying off. This is a great place. I've, I've been working here for over six years. The employees here are terrific. Everybody Everybody takes ownership and pride in the plant that we run. It's great to work with a nice group of people and everyone's supportive of all, all the projects that we have to do. We've been running for three, over 30 years. Our people are very dedicated. After a 30-year-old plant to go set a generation record, you know that the people are working hard to keep this place running, keep it well maintained, keep it operating. We do this safely and efficiently and we do the best of our abilities. There's two big projects. Um, number one in January, Unit 1 turned 50 years old, but we're very proud of it. Uh, it's been a very reliable unit, it's been a good unit for us. Um, so January 10th was 50 years of operation for Unit 1, so we had a celebration for that, and, and uh, a lot of retirees came back, we had a good time. The other one that stands out is uh, the employees hit 3 million man hours without a dart. A lot of employee suggestions are used uh, to try to make it a safe plant day in and day out. You know, it, it seems like uh, we've always got a construction project of some kind going on. With our SNCR that we're commissioning now and then we'll be moving on to our bottom ash project next year. The SNCR project was brought about by the Clean Air Act. Um, it implemented a regional haze program. What we tried to do last year was finish up the building, get the foundation in place, get the building walls completed so we could get to work on piping and electrical work inside, place all the skids get all the systems going and then this year we started up each one system by system. Any water that we spray into the boiler has to be very clean. So we installed a full water plant here. Uh, goes from microfiltration on up to reverse osmosis. So we got very clean water going in. Big milestones this year, starting up the water plant, um, taking our first load of wet urea, taking the first load of dry urea and solutionizing it into wet urea were probably major milestones. It's been a very good learning experience. It's a very unique project. It's kind of one of its kind. It's, it's got more flexibility than any of these types of systems installed anywhere else. Uh, this is our temporary dewatering system that we set up. When the rule came into effect, uh, we had roughly six months to get this system built. 
so that uh, we would put no more ash out to our ash ponds, which, which we accomplished. We've got two cells here, uh, the primary cells, we got one and two. Um, what it does is it takes the bottom ash, comes in through our ash lines, and uh, settles out in here. We sluice two times a shift, so it'd be four times a day, and the ash sits in here overnight, and the guys will come in in the morning, and they'll use the front end loader, scoop the ash out, let it dewater, and uh, then it gets hauled out after the uh, ash has been sufficiently dewatered. Um, we're like a family out here. Um, there's not all that many employees here, and everybody knows everybody. Uh, we work well together. Everybody tries to accomplish uh, and help each other accomplish what needs to be done to, to keep the place going and running efficiently and, and safely. You know, our, our guys put in 110% every day. Whether it's the guys in the control room, the maintenance guys, the operations crew, everybody knows their job, um, does what needs to be done to keep us uh, online, running efficiently, and, and in compliance. 